All right, let's uh, walk you guys through a little bit of um, <clears throat> a couple different videos of me doing some exercises. So I'm gonna pause right here. Um, this is not how I do these now. This was a, an older video, but um, my purpose with providing some of these videos for you guys is not so much to discuss the exact, the exact specifics of how fast you should lift weights, although that does matter, um, to give you guys an appropriate frame of reference for intensity and in regards to other things like proper loading, deloading, neutral head position, I will cover that uh, a little bit later in this video while discussing some training footage. So here you'll see immediately um, with the pec deck there is tension on the target of muscle groups. I'm doing what's called a Valsalva maneuver, which is not something that I advocate now and you see it a lot. It's that stressing and straining to try and lift the weights. Um, I'm going to pick it, the exercise back up and just kind of do organic commentary here and I will pause as necessary. So we'll pick it up right now. So slow controlled repetition, although this is faster than I would lift now. Pause momentarily in the fully contracted position, control it back to the starting position. Another rep. Again, I shouldn't be moving my head like this, but you can see this is a, this is a heavy weight I am stressing. A little momentary pause, control the weight on the way down. Here comes another repetition. Now I'm nearing that point where concentric failure is about to happen. So I'm gonna try this last repetition here. I think this is the last one. Pushing, 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 getting hard to lift, getting hard to lift, getting hard to lift. And I'm gonna pause it right here. At this point, I have essentially reached concentric failure. This is the lowest level of strength. At this point now, I want to hold that isometric, fully contracted position as long as I can. And despite my greatest effort, after a certain period of time, I will no longer be able to just hold the weight. At that point, I will fight the weight the entire way down. This is one of the biggest things that distinguishes high intensity training from any other training protocol. Because you are stronger in the isometric, because you are stronger in the eccentric, this is where the set begins. This is where you're causing the micro trauma. This is where those cross bridges are ripping apart between the actin and the myosin. And this is what causes growth. I'll unpause, control the negative, and I think I, okay, let's see, I try one more here, pushing, 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 really fighting it. I'm moving around a little bit too much, I'm squeezing. All right, I'm gonna pause again. As you can see, I can no longer lift the weight from this position despite my greatest efforts. Um, at this point, I'm doing everything I can to lift the weight even though it's not moving, and uh, my job at this point is to just exert a maximum effort in the target of muscle groups against the imposed resistance and can safely control the weight all the way down. But again, I'm still trying to lift the weight. I'm doing everything I can mentally, physically, emotionally to try and move that weight against the direction of resistance. And I will fight that the entire time. So let's pick it up right now. Pushing, 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 pushing. It's not moving, it's not moving. And it slowly under control comes back, pause to that position. Um, I'm gonna cut this particular exercise short here because that is, uh, what I used to do is I would do a pec deck, superset it immediately into a chest press. I don't train that way now, I don't think it's necessary. But essentially that's gonna do it for um, gauging intensity for this first exercise. All right guys, for the second exercise I wanna talk about, it is a neutral grip chin up. And I should have done a couple of things a little bit differently when I recorded this. First thing I should have done is I should have backed the camera off a little bit. What you don't really see also because of how I edited it is I spend a couple of seconds loading the target of muscle. It's a big mistake. You don't just want to immediately impose a direct force onto whatever target of muscles you're about to work. You want to spend at least a couple of seconds, maybe one to five seconds, slowly loading the target of muscle group. So if somebody's handing you a weight like a lift off on a bench press, what they should not do is lift the weight off the rack and immediately transfer all the weight to you. The handoff should be gradual. It should take a couple of seconds. They should lift the weight off, make sure you have it, give you a very verbal, audible, do you have the weight? And when you say yes, then there should be a gradual interpersonal transfer of that weight. On an exercise like the neutral grip chin-ups here, there's an intra, meaning within personal transfer of weight. At, with my height, I'm 5'11", I can stand on my feet and I can reach up and I can grab the handlebars. So what you don't see because of where this video is edited is I first reach up and grab the handles and get into position. I then basically engage the targeted muscles in my back and I slowly, over the course of a couple seconds, pick my feet up off the ground. I am gradually loading the targeted muscles. 
With that being said, um, you're gonna see some slow controlled pull-ups. Uh, I take approximately five seconds up, five seconds down. I'm not counting a repetition, uh, count, or sorry, I'm not counting like a metronome in my head. My thought as I'm going through this is to try and move at a pace where I can maintain maximum tension on the target of muscles. And you will see that um, my pace isn't always constant. It's something I need to work on. So uh, with that being said, let's pick up the video right now. So I load the muscles and slowly do a pull up. Now because I'm going to pause right here, because I do not have a joint locked out with the muscle in the fully contracted position, it is safe to pause at this moment. At this moment, Because of the force velocity curve, you are imposing more force on the muscles directly against resistance in the isometric, which is the holding, and also the eccentric, which is the lowering portion of the range of movement. Because the joint is not locked out in this position, I can feel safe where I can pause momentarily. So I have about a one to two second pause in this fully contracted position and then I slowly lower. Um, you'll also notice my legs are in a dead hang. I'm not pulling them behind me. I'm not uh, trying to do some weird abdominal move. My purpose when I'm doing this vertical pulling movement is to maximally engage predominantly the lats but also uh, biceps, rear delt, and to an extent, a number of other muscles contract this synergist to help stabilize the body. So let's pick up for the isometric. Momentary pause, slowly lower. Uh, you'll see I have a slow control change of direction. I don't let my feet touch the ground. I pick them up a little bit and a slow change of direction. Changes of direction are a huge potential area for risk of injury throughout the range of movement. If a muscle is partially contracted, if a joint is about halfway through its natural range of movement, um, the exercise is fairly safe, even at faster speeds. However, once you reach those extreme endpoints, joints have limits to how far they can move. And the reason the majority of people get injured, first, is bad form. But second, there's too much force imposed on the joint at those particular extremes at the range of movement. If any of you guys are having a mixed martial arts, into judo, uh, some of the things that you learn is when you're doing things like uh, wrist locks, finger locks, and certain throws, you're forcing that position often through twisting, but also you're taking joints to the extreme end of the range of movement, and then you're implying a force that the joint cannot handle. Uh, this causes pain, and the person, uh, especially in things like judo, end up getting thrown because they're the bigger movement of the body is saving the potential harm that's going to come to that particular limb. So when you have a change of direction, um, you never want to bounce off of the bottom. You never want to bounce off of the top because that force will be absorbed by the joint. If you were to bounce a ball, actually, let me start this way. If you were to drop a bag of sand on the ground, that sand has a certain amount of force imposed uh, because of its weight and because of the speed at which it falls. When it hits the ground, the ground absorbs that equal amount of force. That kinetic force is uh, essentially... Um, absorbed. But if you bounce a ball, there is a greater amount of force imposed on the ball. Um, if you have a ball that's the same amount of weight dropped from the same height, you're going to have the same amount of force being absorbed by the ground when the ball hits. But then the ground pushes up with an additional amount of force that is absorbed into the ball and causes the ball to bounce in the other direction. Likewise, when you have a change of direction, through any uh, exercise that you're performing because you have a concentric and an eccentric portion of the range of movement, you wanna have slow controlled ranges of movement, or excuse me, changes of direction. If you were to forcibly, at like the bottom of a bicep curl or at the bottom of a pull-up, change direction very quickly, you, force, you first have to stop all of the force in one direction to come to a stop. Then, to generate the force required to move in the opposite direction, you have to impose a force on that joint in the opposite direction. Uh, so you wanna have slow controlled changes of direction if long-term joint health is a concern of yours, which it should be. A lot of the times when you see these guys bouncing weights, uh, it doesn't matter if it's off their chest in the bottom of a bench press, uh, it doesn't matter if it's doing curls very quickly or if it's bouncing around where you're doing things like chin-ups or pull-ups, you might not feel it at that point. You might not have an acute injury because of that particular workout, but you don't know. You could very likely be causing what's called a subacute injury. 
micro trauma, micro stress to that joint, which cumulatively over time will lead to injury. And this is a reason a lot of people blindly assume that if you exercise long enough, you will have nagging aches, pains in your joints. I completely reject that notion. The reason that happens is first, you're imposing too large of a stress directly on the joints because you're lifting like an idiot. And second, you're not giving your body sufficient time to recover. Have slow control changes of direction. Let's pick the video back up right now. So I'm pulling very slowly. These are slow repetitions. So uh, pause in the fully contracted position. Let's go on the way down. I think we'll just finish this video up. You can hear I'm breathing a little bit more heavily at this point. When you breathe, mouth open. Don't restrict your volume. Don't perform the Valsalva. And this is the final repetition. It's getting very hard. I can't quite get all the way up. You can see my elbows shaking. It's getting very difficult. Now at this point, I'm gonna pause again. At this point, I'm still trying to pull up as hard as I can. I am just physically incapable of doing so. You'll see that my body is slowly lowering. You can see the muscles in my back contracting to try and maintain that pull-up position. I am still trying to lift. I'm still doing everything I can to pull myself up. You do not see my head moving around. Uh, you don't see my legs kicking. The more of that you see, that's the stuff that everybody likes to see. But the more you do that, the more you are distracting yourself from your ability to maximally contract the targeted muscles against resistance. We like when we watch these videos of people exercising really hard, we generally like to see the the shaking, the moving around, the pursing of the lips, the doing everything they can, the wiggling, because it looks like it's very intense. But the more you do that, the less intense you are making your exercise. True, proper, productive resistance training is not sexy to watch. That's why I have to do commentary on these videos. It's really boring to watch, but it is extremely intense and extremely effective if performed safely, correctly, and progressively. Let's lower. Coming down, coming down, coming down. Still fighting it. And now, okay, now you can see I'm deloading the muscles in the back and I've terminated my set. That is pull-up commentary. Again, slow control changes of direction. Um, be very, uh, very careful with those changes of direction. Maximize intensity. Do everything you can to make an exercise more intense, not less. And if you're doing that, guys, uh, Trust me, once it's a failure, everybody looks at it, everybody thinks it's a joke. These will be brutally intense sets. You will be feeling that fatigue in your muscle for many, many hours if you're doing this correctly. When you finish a set, you should probably be gasping for breath, even if it's a slow controlled pull up. There are a lot of things that people just blindly assume because they look at a routine and they say one set. Well, they're thinking within the framework of their own intensity and within their own volume recommendations. They're thinking about lifting the weight explosively and not maintaining attention on the target of muscles. Exercise when performed correctly is brutally intense. It's not fun, but it will work and it will produce results for everybody if performed safely, correctly, and progressively. That being said, thanks for watching. I hope this clears up some things. And again, I'm here if you need anything. Feel free to ask me any questions. And I'm going to put together something on diet as soon as I can here. I will see you soon.